Hey, welcome back to Mrs. B Reads. We are here with my period six class. Yay! And we're working on the canyon's edge. So I guess we there was a glitch and we skipped a section on the YouTube channel. So I'm sorry if you were looking for it and you couldn't find it, but here it is. All right, we are on the chapter called Rebuild. In the book, it's page 77. The yipping of coyotes above startles me awake on this hard rock. My body filled with tremors, every nerve shooting pain. So this is her second night alone in the canyon? Or, right, is it? Yeah, it's okay. No, it's definitely not the first. I know I shouldn't. Wait a minute. I know I'm not supposed to, but I won't let him near me. Hmm. So I build my wall and I lay my shame and brick and anger and stone and guilt and clay and fear and rock and hate. See how that's all stacked up like a wall? Yep. <clears throat> layer after layer, but I know deep inside, it's really all just frosted flakes. What figure of speech is that? No, not a simile. Yes! They can be taught, it's a metaphor. Weakness. I wait for numbness. Actually, this could be the first night. I'm sorry. I wait for numbness. I am colder than I've ever been, both inside and out. The wall won't hold, Eleanor. Why are those words written in italics? Why are they slanted? Because that's what she's thinking. That's what she's thinking. Nice job, P.S. Here's your t-shirt. Okay. Yes, it will. Rewrite your nightmare. Don't make me think about him. Rewrite it into something where you are stronger, braver, more powerful. But I'm not. But you are. Almost. I am freezing. And then it's crossed out. I love that. I am almost freezing. If I were frozen, I would be numb, peaceful, asleep, but not dreaming. In some horrible way, I wish I were completely frozen because that wouldn't hurt as much as almost because I wouldn't have to feel him clawing at every tiny gap in my wall that is almost strong enough to keep him out. Who's this him? Do we know who the him is? Do you have an idea? The shooter, the shooter. yeah. Yep, the shooter, lie. Who is the beast, Eleanor? The beast only exists in my dreams. Really, he's just make-believe. Everything about him non-existent. The beast, with a capital B, isn't rational or real. And then if you look, it spells the word tormentor going down. So that is an example of an acrostic poem. And my kids today are writing shape poems and acrostic poems, right? Yes. On your folded papers, yes. like yes. Sophia. Yes. Be like Sophia. Yeah, you can work on that. Okay. So acrostic poems have the word going down, so it's a vertical. And then every word coming off of it horizontally relates to that up and down word. Okay? All right. Not real. You've got to be kidding me. That was the pencil sharpener. This is why I need my own reality TV show because people of America would not believe the shenanigans that middle schoolers do. Are we all set? Your pencil, pencil sharp? Not real. Yeah. They're all apologizing for him. He doesn't even realize. Oh. Anyway. I feel lost, floating in the ink of the canyon. I slip in and out of consciousness, too exhausted to stay awake, too cold to fully sleep. I curl my body into a tight ball, hug my legs to my chest, rub my bare arms, breathe warmth into my sore, sanded hands. I wonder how much my body temperature is dropping and I curse myself for taking off my hoodie. This night will never end. This is her first night. Every time I drift, I hear him coming closer, closer. Every time I feel my mind slip away before startling awake again, drifting, waking, drifting, waking all night long. Shivering, shuddering, shaking. What's that an example of? Shivering, shuddering, shaking. What's an example of? Nope. It's figurative language. What is it, honey? Nope. It's figurative language. It's an example of a kind of figurative language. 
Audra, yeah, alliteration, nice job. When the same starting sound repeats over the course of a few words, you got yourself some alliteration. Shivering, shuddering, shaking, quaking all night long. Telling myself he's not real, he's not real, he's not real all night long, but never ever rewriting anything all night long. Wonder. And then something wondrous. The sky is lightning again. Relief at seeing the light fills me up, spills over down my cheeks and onto the cold rock. I watch the sun turn the ribbon of sky above me from speckled black velvet to deep purple satin to beautiful pink silk. I've made it through the torturous night. My wall held, I kept him away. Stay. I need to move to heat my cold body. Pushing myself up, I peer at the ground, which still looks damp. I carefully slide down the rock, allowing one boot to touch the ground. It doesn't sink in nearly as much as last night. So I put both feet down, my legs give out, and I stumble. My knees digging into the soaked silt, mud smothering and sanding and stinging my sores. I stand up dizzy, spinning, leaning against the outcropping. I focus on putting one foot in front of the other, concentrate on taking step after step. My rubbery legs feel more steady with each movement. My breathing evens out. My heart slows its slamming. I stop. Should I instead walk to the Jeep, break a window, wait for help? Who would come? Too hot, no water, all supplies swept away. Walk to the main road? How far is it? Could I find the way? Too hot, no water, all supplies swept away. I look down the canyon in the direction of dad, making his way back to me right now. I know he would never leave without me and I won't leave without him. What would you do if you were Nora stuck in that canyon? What would you do? Go back to the Jeep, break the window, press on the horn, hope that somebody hears you and comes for you. Go find the main road, try to find civilization somewhere. Carry on down the canyon and go look for dad. Choice A, raise your hand if it's choice A, Jeep. Raise your hand if it's choice B, main road. Raise your hand if it's choice C, canyon. We're about a three-way split. What would you do? Colors. I should. I find a small puddle in a hollow spot on a rock and lap up as much water as I can. Then I look up at the slice of sky and long to be in the sun again. The canyon looks different today. Lichen bursts like fireworks around me in different shades of green, lime and split pea and mint. The layers wobble and waver. It's as though a small child ran through the canyon. It's as though a small child ran through the canyon. What figure of speech is that? Yes, a simile. See, I told you, be like Sophia. It's as though a small child ran through the canyon while I lay on the rock all night and colored the walls outside the lines with wild scribbles in deep, angry red crayon. Steps. I focus on taking one step at a time toward dad. He'll find me. He's walking back toward me right now, just as I'm walking to him. And then we'll figure it all out together. Step, step, step. The air is warming. My steps are faster. My body is heating. I'm so thirsty. I stop at every puddle I find in the sunken spots on rocks. Each one seems smaller than the last. Would you drink puddle water? I climb over a large boulder blocking the narrow path, then reach a broader opening grateful for the space, wide enough to let in more light, wide enough for a flood tattered ironwood tree debris littering its broken branches to grow from a seed blown down a long time ago. Step, step, step. I move around the tree and the canyon narrows again and shuts out the light. Step, step, step. Dad will find me soon. Loss. I see something in the distance sticking out of the ground. As I near it, I find a piece of garbage washed into the canyon from who knows where an old plastic cup, a sign of human life, garbage. But a cup can be useful, a cup can hold water. Lifting it out of the mud, I find it's only part of a cup. I try to put it in my pocket, but it crumbles 
brittle from the brutal heat. I wipe the pieces from my sore palms and they flutter to the ground around a pile of broken shale. That's a kind of rock. One shard of gray shale catches my eye and I pick it up. It's flat and sharp on one end. I run a finger along the razor-like edge. It scratches me, draws a tiny amount of blood. I slip the rock into my back pocket. This stone knife could be useful down here in the canyon. I imagine myself using it to skin the hide from a kangaroo rat and snort at the thought. I move my hand to my front pocket, but the heart-shaped stone isn't there. Who gave her the heart-shaped stone, do you remember? Dad. Yep, good. My eyes blur and my lip quivers and I want to crumble to the ground like the fluttering, brittle bits of broken cup. That's a simile. I wipe my eyes and bite my lip and stay standing. I don't have time to get all bent out of shape over a lost rock. Endless walls. The light lowers down the wall, warming the canyon. How long have I been walking? It's hard to tell when I can't see the sun. It already feels like I've walked inches, feet, yards, miles, and miles. My steps quicken and my heart speeds with anticipation as I round every new corner, expecting dad to appear. But all I find are more walls made of waves like the water that carved them. Deadly. Oh boy, brace yourself. This one's a doozy. That sound, effervescent. Do you know what effervescent is? It's the sound your bubbles make when you pour yourself a soda. That shh, effervescent. Sizzling, like dad frying sausage in the morning. Coiled, head held high and back, ready to spring, fill me with venom if I get too near. What is it? Tongue flicks over and over again, smelling me, figuring me out. A narrow tunnel of sunlight shines down into the canyon, cracking the silt under my feet and warming the snake. It's also drying the last of my puddles and scorching my pale sun-starved skin. It must be around noon. I pick up a stone from the canyon floor and toss it at the snake, which rattles its warning at me, but it doesn't move. Make a prediction. Does she get bit or not? Raise your hand if she gets bit. Raise your hand if not. We're about half and half. Let's find out. Away. I am so, so tired. I am swaying on my feet. I sit down on a rock out of striking distance and study the snake. Looks like a diamond back, but greenish tinge, fading diamond pattern, white rings on tail, wider than black rings. It's a Mojave. Deadly venomous. I have no choice but to wait it out. My head nods in exhaustion. The warmth is like a drug dragging me under. I keep my boots on the canyon floor as I lean to the side and rest my head on the rock. The stone is warm against my cheek and arms and I am instantly drifting, no longer concerned about the deadly snake in my way. I am gone, floating away into the darkness of my mind, away to the place where he can find me. Another lie. You can be honest, Eleanor. Who is the beast? Maybe you're not listening or don't want to listen, but I have no more to say. The beast is not even real. And what does that spell out when you guys look down? It spells out, say it in one big voice. What? Monster. Monster. That's an acrostic poem. And we're going to end there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. Thank you.